Hello everybody. Uh, it's come to my attention that y'all haven't been reading your Bible. No, I'm just kidding. All right. But however, our Lord and Savior, Mr. Earl Scruggs, had a little bit of advice when it came to something that is a lot of how and what you sound like on this instrument. Okay. Now, if I were to take and maybe guide you along a little bit right here. Okay. Over here on this cover of page 29, we have what is a picture of his hand from underneath. And you can see that these are some old national finger picks right here, and they have been altered. Okay. They have been adjusted. They have been bent to his specifications. Okay. If I go, where am I going? There we go. If I go back here to the general overview, there is a little bit of advice in the opening section of this book that says, I prefer the national type picks for two reasons. They are made of lighter gauge material and have holes in them as shown in the finger pick diagram. Okay. The holes help a bit in preventing them coming off. I agree. You may wish to reshape them as they are all made the same size. If the point is too straight for you, bend it to your specification. I think a lot of y'all ain't doing that. Okay. And if you don't believe me, this nice little illustration at the very end. You can see he has a signature with a couple finger picks that have obviously been bent. A lot more than what they come from the factory. Okay. So you have two different options when it comes to your finger picks. You can either choose plastic or metal. Uh, hopefully you are choosing metal. They are the preferred type. And there are several that are on the market. Um, these happen to be some old... Uh, really old nationals. I believe they're pre-war models, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, you can see that over the years, this is just a regular stock thumb pick, no really big deal about that. These have been significantly altered to my specifications, okay? To me, these are a pair of shoes, all right? They fit on my fingers so well and so comfortable there, I got them right the first time, okay? That if I get them backwards, I can immediately tell that they're, I can immediately tell that these are on the wrong fingers. It's just like if I were to put a right shoe on a left foot or a left shoe on a right foot. All right, so, yep, just uh, digging around in my pocket. If I put them on real quick and I got them backwards, I just pop them off and put them right back on, and there we go. Okay, now, my particular setup, you can see that that's right about where I like them when they play. All right. Now, if I look at them from the side right here, you can see, let me get them up here a little bit tighter without it getting fuzzy, that these tips I have bent all the way to match the curve of my finger. And it's not necessarily that my finger is being mashed, and it's not necessarily that my finger is being squeezed, but rather I have taken the time to shape my finger picks so that way they follow the curve of my finger. That's just what I like, okay? I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong. I'm here to give you a different look on things, okay? Now, here is one that would have come right out of the box, all right? This is an older Dunlop that I have sitting around. I don't really have a whole lot of spare picks. However, this is what they look like when you dig in the box at your local music store and you find some finger picks and you're like, ah, yeah, they're, that'll, that'll work just fine. And a lot of people will say, all right, let me just take and I'm just going to clamp that down there and make sure they're tight and we're good to go. And that's perfectly fine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm not telling you what is right or what is wrong. Okay. I'm just giving you a different view on what might work for you. Okay. There are plenty of really, really, really really good pickers out there that play with stock straight picks just like this okay i am not one of them <laughs> i can't stand this this feels like a like an upside down fingernail to me that i need to cut off and i can't stand it okay when i'm playing that string will oftentimes get right in there and then it goes it falls right off and then it falls right at my feet and then i gotta go dig it up 
kind of embarrassing okay so instead i have played with curve picks now it is my belief and this is just my little personal anecdote okay that if you learn to play with picks as a beginner when you pick this up you probably learned how to play with stock picks and that's what feels right for you okay however in my case I learned how to play without picks okay so I learned how to play with just the very 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 outer tip of my finger and that's probably again it's my opinion that's probably why I prefer ones that follow the contour of my finger okay now here's the problem you get these from the shop they look exactly like that so how do we make them from here to here how did Earl do it? How do I do it? I honestly don't know how Earl did it, but I probably have a decent idea. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next few minutes and I'm going to show you how to bend this pick. So that way, first of all, you don't make any mistakes. But then second of all, there's a couple different ways you can bend it that you'll really, really like. Okay, so let's get started with that. First of all, for basic hardware, you are going to need a pair of pliers. Okay. If you have a pair of needle nose, perfectly nothing wrong with that whatsoever, except there is a serious danger involved in this. You see how this guy's got a little few teeth right in here, which is really, really good for grabbing onto things. But the problem is, is when you go bending on these and you start twisting that metal around, you will scratch these picks which in itself is not a big deal. I mean, honestly, who cares? However, this pick surface right down here that comes in contact with your string, if this is scratched, you will have some very big problems very quickly. Okay, so we absolutely do not scratch this. In fact, you know what? If you have really nice ones like what I have, don't scratch them at all. All right, so here's how you can prevent that. If somewhere in your possession you have a pair of surgical forceps, okay, these have no teeth inside, okay, and they will not scratch. However, and this is a big however, this is still going to be metal on metal contact, and that is definitely not good. So take out an insurance policy and just use a little bit of a barrier, usually a paper towel or my personal favorite is a t-shirt. <laughs> And what you do is you just take and you can bend and you know what I'm gonna use these pliers just to show you that it's possible okay so I'm gonna make sure that whatever I twist on these things right here I'm gonna make sure it gets covered in that paper towel when I go bend it on them okay now I bend quite a bit okay now some most people are gonna bend this guy and they're gonna curve it up however and I'll show you this in another video there's a reason why I also like to curve them and skew them a little bit around to the side okay now also if you have kind of smaller fingers like me and these um, little finger band grip pick little arm things are going to put pressure on your cuticles up here it can actually be quite painful okay because a lot of people will grab and they'll just mash it down especially if it's in the middle of summer and it's real hot and your fingers get all kind of a little bit sweaty and these things just tend to slide off um, I know a couple of people use super glue <laughs> to keep them on gorilla snot works good too but if they are comfy and if they fit nice and tight I can't even tell it's on there and I have yet to have lost one of these two in over nearly 20 years of playing okay so what you do if I pick up this guy right here you can see maybe see if I can bring this up a little bit for you right here you can see that I have actually splayed this out there we go so that way it follows the contour of my finger so that way it's larger where my finger goes in and it's slightly smaller down here where my finger comes out okay there we go maybe you can see that a little bit easier so I have actually turned these slightly angled that way they don't put pressure on my cuticles up here okay and that way they're seriously comfortable 
Second thing I've done, you see how they're nice and kind of like finger shaped. They're kind of oval in this direction. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do with these. Now I mash those up just to show for demonstration. That's the way it's going to look when it comes out of the box. And the first thing you can do, uh, you can you can do this by hand if you want. However, to get a really nice pretty curve, you should probably use pliers. Okay. What you do, get up here, and you want to start down at the bottom, and you just want to go a little bit. So I just want to go, and I just want to torque a little bit. I'm not, I'm not squeezing hard with the pliers. I'm just holding it in place, and I'm actually, this is the secret, I'm actually rolling the metal around this rounded tip. Okay, so I'm going to take these guys, and I'm just going to make sure I'm not going to scratch them and I'm just going to turn a little bit and then I'm actually going to go slightly up and then I'm going to turn a little bit more and then I'm going to go slightly up, slightly up, slightly up and turn, turn, turn and I'm going to put a nice curve or an arc into these picks in only a couple seconds. So and I'm only moving maybe like a sixteenth, maybe an eighth of an inch at a time. I'm not moving a whole lot. So there we can take a look and see what it looks like real quick. There we go. How about that? All right. So that's what it would have looked like out of factory on the left side. And that's what I've already done on the right, just with a pair of pliers in about five seconds. Okay. So actually, that don't look too bad. Let me do the same to the other side here real quick. And all I want to do... I know it's hard to see because I'm covering everything up here, but you definitely don't want to scratch them. So I'm just going a little bit and I'm just twisting the metal around the pliers. I'm not squeezing the pliers because I don't want those teeth to cut into that metal. And all I want to do is I just want to bend and just curve that metal around. Let's see what we got right here. Okay, not bad. Looks like we need a little bit more curve right here. I might be able to open it up a little bit. That's the nice thing, is that if you ever make a mistake, you can just <laughs> bend it right back. All right. So how about that? How does that feel? That's actually pretty tight on mine. Okay. And your fingers are going to swell and shrink day by day. It depends on... How much water or other beverages you drank it depends on how much salt you have it depends on what temperature it is how much you sweat it depends uh, what I've actually found is if I do a lot of work with my hands like especially like power tools the next day your fingers just kind of get a little bit swelled just in recovery and if you try to pick eh, these things get tight so you know eh, pickers after a while we'll, we learn to just open and close these as you need to okay your fingers will never be the same size every day believe it or not and actually that feels pretty good okay i'm going to leave that as it is i believe dunlops are naturally um naturally angled unlike nationals okay now the tricky part is going to be getting this pick edge to match the contour of my finger and i want to do the same exact thing that I did with these um, pick arm gripper thingers. I don't even know if there's a name for them. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I definitely do not want to scratch this surface at all. Okay. And remember, you want to go a little bit at a time. And I'm just going to take and I'm just going to bend and I'm just going to roll and I'm going to bend and roll. And I'm just going to slowly move up until I get it right to the end. And you know what? Let's see what we got right there. So move up. Oh, we got a pretty decent curve in it already. Maybe you can see it a little bit better right there. Okay. I might actually like that. Let me see. That's pretty close. Okay. So I might actually bring that up so that way it's... I like mine into a 90. I'm going to check this side. It looks pretty good. Okay. Um, this might actually work better for a middle finger for me. Like I said, these are these are basically like a pair of shoes. And they feel kind of good on both ends. All right. Now, the one last thing that I do like to do 
is I like to angle my picks so that way they are slightly canted for my natural picking motion. Okay, so this is probably the best way to see it right here. If I see, mm, let me see, I might have to get better background here. Oh, what else better to use than a Scruggs book, right? So if you can see how this is very flush in the back and how the, I don't know how you want to say here, I've twisted it towards the left side, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've twisted it towards the left side, I'm a right-handed picker, so I've twisted it, mm, I guess you want to say, what, supinate? This is the correct medical term. I want to do the same thing for this one right here. Okay. Now this one has been uh, actually twisted the wrong way <laughs> for me. Uh, this might be good for a left hand picker. That's why it felt kind of weird. So flush. There we go for the camera. It is level in the back and you can see that it's actually angled in this. Sorry. You can see that it's angled in this direction and I want it to be angled in this direction so I need to take this pick edge and I actually need to twist that whole entire metal so it's canted in the other direction it's probably the correct word and you just want to go a little bit and you just want to see what happens Sometimes, if they're kind of thinner metal, like these guys are, you can do them by hand, okay? Now, this one I've done extreme just for demonstration, okay? But you can see that now it's straight in the back, and it's now canted in the other direction. Now, this to me is like the most comfortable... Oop, we lost our angle, okay? Or, I'm sorry, we lost our curve. So, when you can't or you twist that pick edge you will retain the back curve you will lose the front curve so you will be going back and forth a little bit with this and remember a little bit goes a long way and just might want to twist it up just a little bit more and there we have it back okay and there that feels nice okay and as you can see I have not law I have not scratched it I have not lost any material and eventually it'll feel like a pair of shoes all right one of the pet peeves of mine is when people say hey can I borrow your picks I'm gonna play your banjo can I borrow your picks and I say you can play my banjo I don't have any problem with that but you're dang sight not borrowing my picks okay because these are mine okay you wouldn't let somebody borrow your shoes now would you so why are you letting them borrow your picks? <laughs> In fact, I love my picks so much I use these when I uh, finger pick guitar. So when I, whenever we do like Scruggs style tunes, I'll, I'll use these for finger picking. And I love them so much that I have absentmindedly, you just, you know, you take them off, you start talking to people after the show, you put them, you know, like on a stage or on a speaker, or, you know, somebody puts a speaker away and they just put them up there on the window and say like, oh, he'll get them sometime later. And then you drive off and you go home and you say, oh, man, where's my picks? I left them there. I've actually driven over an hour to go get my picks back because, to me, these are irreplaceable. All right. So if you ever want to ransom anything in your life, you can have pretty much anything of mine. Just don't take my picks. 